way back in the 1950s and 1960s when I was growing up as a good Catholic boy, we never heard much about the Holy Spirit. We heard a fair bit about God, of course, and a lot about Jesus Christ, whom we called our Lord. But the Holy Spirit was somehow lost in the wings. And it really wasn't until I was already ordained a priest that I really awakened to the power of the Holy Spirit in my life and in the lives of many people and in the life of the church. And this was in my first parish when I was newly ordained, I was still only in my 20s, and a group of people gathered together to discuss and pray their way through a book called Renewal in Faith. Now this experience of journeying with these people was an extraordinary experience for me. And for the first time I think I really understood who the Holy Spirit is and what the Holy Spirit is as power and as presence in my life. So the charismatic renewal that produced that book has always been a kind of a theme in my life. I've never been formally part of the charismatic renewal, but I've been hugely enriched by the charismatic renewal and by people involved in leadership often in the charismatic renewal in Australia and around the world. This led to me being invited in the 1990s to speak at a very large gathering in England at a place called Ilfracum. It was a conference at Easter time called Celebrate. And there again I saw in a way I had never seen before the power of the Holy Spirit to change people's lives and in a sense to change the world. And seeing that for me was another experience of awakening a kind of a new threshold. Again, when I look further on in my journey, I think of the Synod of Bishops when I was already a bishop for quite some years, the Synod of Bishops in, 19, in 2015. It was the second of the two synods on marriage and the family, and I was one of the two Australian bishops who were at that synod. Now, this was a, 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 an extraordinary experience of seeing the Holy Spirit awaken in a, in a group of bishops engaged in the process of discerning listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, as we are in Australia at the moment with the Plenary Council. And it was really out of that experience of the Synod in 2015 that I became convinced that the Plenary Council was what God wanted here and now in Australia. It was, and remains, the work of the Holy Spirit. But again, that Synod in 2015 for me was an experience of a awake, new awakening. And there's that word again. The Holy Spirit is often called the great comforter, and that's true. The Holy Spirit breathed into us, into the depth of our being, is, is a source of great comfort, deep, deep peace. But the Holy Spirit is also the great disruptor in my experience, because these experiences of awakening, that are the work of the Holy Spirit in my own life, are really experiences both of comfort and disruption. But beyond comfort and disruption in my life and in the life of the church, I'd have to say that my experience suggests that the Holy Spirit is the great awakener. We talk about vocation awareness, and it is important to be aware, but you can't be aware unless you wake up. So it's the power of the Holy Spirit that has awakened me, and I hope in this Pentecost moment that the Holy Spirit will awaken you to the call of God in your life and in the life of the church, and that then you will become truly aware with the awareness of God. Over the next nine weeks, you're going to hear stories of people telling about the work of the Holy Spirit in their life. So I invite you, I urge you to listen to their stories so that you can see more of what the Spirit is up to in your life.